everyone, welcome to the Electric Supercar Channel. This week, we're gonna be putting a Tesla Model 3 motor in a Toyota pickup truck. For those of you who are new, let me catch up to speed. This is a 1987 Toyota pickup truck. So this one is very similar to the one they used in the movie Back to the Future, so we are calling it the Back to the Future truck. And for this build, what we're doing is we're doing electric conversion. We are using a Model 3 motor, and we're gonna mount this in the middle. That means one output shaft is gonna to go to the front differential, drive the front wheels. The other output shaft is gonna to go to the rear differential and drive the rear wheels. The front has locking hubs, so we can do two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. In a previous episode, we did a gear reduction as well as a limited slip differential. The limited slip differential is so we don't just spin just the back wheels or just the front wheels. We'll have essentially all wheel drive. The gear set swap was required because essentially the differentials have a two to one gear reduction. That means our top speed would be limited to something like 60 or 70 miles an hour. So to get back to that speed, we had to swap the gears so we have a different gear ratio. Essentially the motor output is gonna go twice as fast. So follow along as we install a Tesla Motor Model 3 on a Toyota pickup truck. Let's get to it. We are working on the Toyota pickup. So first things first, we did an entire scan of the undercarriage. So I used the Peel 3D scanner. This is on loan from Peel 3D. Go over to their website and tell them thank you for supporting this channel. With this scan, I determined a placement for the motor. I found the center point of the front differential and the center point of the rear differential. I drew a line between those and put the motor output shafts right in the middle of those. And I also placed it in the center where there was a cross beam that supported the transfer case and transmission. The plan was to use these same beefy mounts to mount the motor. So in CAD, I drew up a support structure that allowed for motor mounting. And just like that, we now have parts from Sen Cut Sen. And we are going to start welding. So we are under the truck and we've got these plates are just gonna be bolted to the existing frame. And those were bolts already there from the transmission cross member mount. So that plate and the one on the other side, that, those are already there and that's a good position for them to be. So the very first weld we're gonna do is I've got this really long cross member. I'm just gonna tack it on both sides. So this is what uh, one of the cross members look like. The other one's already ready to be welded, but yeah, it's just, it spans the uh, whole car, the whole chassis. All right, taking a quick break just to catch you up. So I started just with tack welds on here while it was on the vehicle. From there, we did just a, a few stitch welds. I'm just being really cautious because I don't want this thing to warp like in any direction. Um, so did stitch welds there and there. Now I've got kind of some structure on it and I've just tacked it in several different places. In order to make sure things don't warp, I think what I'll do, instead of doing nice, clean, long passes, which I really like, I'll probably just do, you know, like cut it into quarters or something, do one there, one there, and have the fan going so it can cool down. Got a wet rag so it can kind of soak up some of the heat as well. But I'll try and put things down, clamp it so things don't warp. But yeah, we'll just go to town. Okay, so I've done stitch welds now kind of on the top and the bottom, just various spots, because want to make sure that this doesn't warp. And I think we've got enough of it done that we can kind of start doing a kind of full welds on the rest of the parts. All right, I'm going to talk real quick about uh, welding, the heat, why you want to avoid it. So if you got a piece of steel, when it heats up, it actually elongates. It actually gets longer on all sides. And so coefficient of thermal expansion. So that's for every degree it gets hotter, it expands by so much. So as you can imagine, when you're welding steel, it's getting red hot. Now that's just in one location, but essentially the heat kind of tends to go everywhere. When the heat goes everywhere, then the whole piece kind of gets longer. So here's what can happen. Usually um, you're putting things in place and you'll do a tack, you'll tack weld things in a couple places, right? Well, if you start like doing a lot of welding where you're building up heat, this thing really wants to expand kind of in all directions from that heat, it wants to expand. So what can happen, one is it can actually pop the weld, so it'll actually break that and cause it to go that way. Or it can actually keep the weld, but then it has to go somewhere. So it'll kind of do a warp to kind of allow it to expand as much as it needs to. So both of those cases are not ideal. So in theory, you kind of want to limit your heat. So that's what I'm trying to do is kind of do little welds, um, soak up the heat, uh, get the fan there to kind of blow off as much heat as we can. 
Um, when I get a damp cloth, I won't do it on the weld, but I'll do it kind of next to the weld to try and make it so the rest of the steel doesn't heat up and expand. We have about half of this welded up. So when I say that, I've got all these panels that are fully welded, but that's only half. I got panels like essentially on the other side. Um, what I'm gonna try this time is I'm actually gonna try to do a coat of the paint now on the underside, cause it's hard to like spray through to the underside. So I'm gonna do a coat of paint while I can on these, and then I'm gonna weld on the other sides. For today's sponsor, we have Upbeat Plus, a portable electric tire inflator. All right, so it looks like we got a nice bag to carry things in. So we've got like a regular charging cable, USB, and then this one's adapts to your car to be able to charge it. Got your, your inflation hose and adapters for like balls or whatever you might need to inflate. Let's put it to the test. Now it's on, very nice. Modes, you've got kind of a car, motorcycle, bicycle, basketball. This is probably just custom. There's light, blinking, faster blinking. And off. It has a long lasting 7.8 amp hour battery. So it can act like a battery bank to even charge your phone. And it has an amazing 160 PSI peak operating pressure. It can fill a tire from 30 PSI to 35 PSI in as little as 90 seconds. So it's at 33, we're gonna go to 35. It stays cool even after prolonged use. And it's even got an alarm when you're done. So this is super quiet at only 65 decibels. Again, I think things like this are a must in emergency situations. So if you don't have one in your car, I'll leave a link in the video description below. All right, so the main cross section's all done. I'm now working on the motor mounts. So it'll be kind of one here, and then there's gonna be arms off of both sides. I put the motor on so I could get this mount exactly where it needed to be. I welded a couple stretches here, tacked in a couple places. I think now it's gonna be best to kind of take the motor off and do complete welds. We got this arm welded on, so that's all that's gonna be for this one, we do have one more mount. Um, it's actually gonna be in a different location, not attached to this. I got a lot of comments last time when I did one of these mounts about, I don't know if you wanna call it the webbing or the space between the two plates. Between here and here, there's a space. So in general, you wanna create something that has some distance between it. That distance helps really a lot with the strength um, to have something that's more three-dimensional uh, as opposed to just a single plane. So we've got some distance here, but there's a hollow spot in between. And what a lot of people said is, hey, when you're putting a bolt through there and really tightening it, um, this can flex. You really wanna have um, some webbing material. So what I've got this time is I've got some 
pretty thick walled tubing. So I'm gonna cut little uh, tubes and weld them into place here and here. And I will also do that and put them in the Jeep as well. Ready to do my last one and when I was about to pull it, I noticed the blade was kind of wobbling. So I kind of stood back and it just snapped. So again, this was under no load, but uh, yeah, we'll just get it replaced. So I just welded in these bridge pieces, so we're good to go. I'm just gonna scuff things up, paint the inside as much as I can again, and then weld on the tops that I cut off. These things do happen. I don't wanna make light of it, but I do wanna share that these things can happen. It's a reminder for me that safety is a very big priority. I would love to have a new shop where I can have a little more dedicated space for things like welding and grinding, things that throw sparks, so it's further away from any ignition sources. Um, I've got more of this information, but I'm saving that for my Patreon supporters. If you're interested in Patreon, I'll leave a link in the video description below. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna clean this up and give it a coat of paint. All right, we're taking you underneath here. So basically we've got it bolted there. Again, these are original bolt holes for the cross member. And this is the structure that I made. So what I'm gonna do now is I gotta load the motor and I've got one more cross member that I'm gonna secure at the last mount for the motor. All right, so we got the motor mounted. Again, we are missing, so right there at the back, we're gonna create one more piece. Uh, I've got the metal for it. We just gotta put it in place, tack it together, and do some welding. All right, it turns out I didn't order one piece from Send, Cut, Send, but I've got one that's close to the same size. I just need to put a couple holes in it. So I'm gonna get under the car and do kind of a little uh, smearing and stuff to kind of get the exact location of the holes. There we go, we got those two holes. some uh, square tubing.
All right, I tacked this in place a couple places. Um, I've got material to box this in, so we'll go ahead and do that on the welding table. Definitely running out of gas. just out of gas. I need to swap out the tank. So again, some good welding. That's what it looks like when you run out of gas. All right, got a tank with new gas. Don't tell me. Am I out of welding wire? That was like ridiculous. Ugh, literally. Okay, just like that, we've got this last motor mount all mounted to the chassis. All right, we did it. We got that motor mounted. We are that much closer to getting this on the road. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Oh my gosh, I did it again. All right, scratch those other ones. For those of you who, so this is very similar to the moot. <sighs> what are we doing? A gear reduction as well as a 